Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Drum History News. Today we're talking about Chick Evans. He is kind of an elusive character. Um, obviously, he is the founder of Evans Drumheads way back. He would battle it out with Remo Belly of Remo Drumheads for who was the first person to bring um, synthetic plastic Mylar drumheads to market. Because obviously at that point they were calf skin and that's a whole uh, different topic which has been covered on the podcast. I'll include that stuff in the description. So these um, really cool news articles were sent in by my friend Andy Dwyer of ADC Drums in uh, Liverpool, England. And uh, they really paint a pretty good picture of who Chick Evans was. He kind of had a bit of a, a bad boy background. And I, I use that term because the name of his band that you'll see in a picture soon is Chick's Bad Boys. And um, so we're going to read this first one that has a really good description of his life, which I could not find anywhere else. This this article actually put together more information than I think anything else I could find online. So that's cool. But after that, we're going to look at some um, shorter little articles that are kind of like when he got in trouble uh, as a 21, 22 year old guy. Um, it's just interesting because it's it's really there's uh, some robbery that uh, we'll read about and then um, some problems during prohibition of selling alcohol. So very interesting. I want to say up front that this was a long time ago. Uh, Chick Evans hasn't really been involved with the company in a very long time. It got sold multiple times. So um, I this is all with respect. And I just think it's interesting to read about this stuff. Um, and uh, he kind of plays into the bad boy persona a little bit, obviously, by uh, the name of his band. Finding information about Chick's birthday was actually not easy. I couldn't find an obituary or anything when I Googled it. So um, I asked Andy Dwyer, who sent all this stuff in, if he knew uh, Chick's birth date. He sent me a 1940 census report uh, where Chick Evans or Marion Evans, he went by Chick, um, filled it out in 1940 at the age of 33. So that would mean he was born in 1907. It says he was a proprietor and manager of a nightclub. Uh, so he was always working in the industry as a drummer and um, in a nightclub, which we'll hear about more with the um, prohibition thing that I mentioned later. Our first article is from 1988, and it is from the Santa Fe New Mexican. To start with, in the middle, we see uh, a picture of Chick Evans playing the drums. I don't know when this photo was taken, but I know that in his 20s, he did have a bit of a um, kind of a rough and rowdy side, which is interesting. And it's kind of cool that he went with it and named his band <laughs> Chick's Bad Boys. The article says, Drummer Sells Own Product. Evans formed his own company and took to the road to promote the merchandise. He went to Chicago, the Gulf States, Salt Lake City. All over the country, drummers and band leaders were eager for the improvement plastic drum heads represented, as Evans' folder full of yellowing endorsement letters and requests will attest. Florence, his wife, stayed home raising the Evans' two children and making drum heads in the garage. Evans experienced a setback in the late 1950s when they discovered through an article in Downbeat magazine that a former customer had started manufacturing the drum heads under his own name. A lawsuit followed, and Evans said the company settled with him out of court. Obviously, that is Remo. I should have held out for more, he complains. That guy has made millions from the idea, but I had other things to think about at the time, so maybe I wasn't as persistent as I could have been. Evans eventually went into partnership with two people from Dodge City, Kansas. He got tired of Dodge City, sold out the business, and moved back to Santa Fe. Then I tooled up and went into business by myself again. Pretty soon I was making so many, Dodge City called me and said, we want to buy you out again. So I said, sure, and I sold out again. That was the end of the drum business for Evans, at least for a while. Now that his and Florence's five grandchildren have all grown up and given them nine great-grandchildren, Evan says he needs something to keep him busy. He plays a few hot licks on a snare drum in the study just to show a visitor he still has the moves. Then he indicates a corner table cluttered with hoops, circles, and mylar and a drill. I'm just making a few now, he says, and just 14-inch snare drum heads. Instantly, he's Chick Evans, drum salesman again. I can sell them less than the stores, you know, because I don't have that overhead. If anyone's interested in looking at them, they can call me. I'm here all the time. Then he gestures to his wife. But don't count on Florence helping. She said she'd made just about all the drum heads she was going to make in this lifetime. Florence just smiles and nods. Really a cool look at Chick Evans' life kind of summed up uh, very quickly. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. There's there's a lot still to learn there about his particular, you know, what happened when. So hopefully I can do a full Evans drumhead episode um, to cover it all. Now, the next few articles are uh, more of a look at that bad boy uh, persona that he really embraced, obviously, by naming his band that. These were from uh, almost 100 years ago, so pretty interesting to read this. The first one says the Lamy case. I think that's how you pronounce it. 
Two indictments and an alleged post office robbery at Lamy also will arouse interest. The defendants are W.A. Evans, alias Gus Evans, and Marion L. Evans, alias Chick Evans. One or both defendants appeared to be of high school appearance and age when arraigned here before a United States commissioner last fall. They are charged with stealing postal funds from the post office in the store of Tom Hanna, well-known Lamy merchant. The numerous robberies of the Hanna store at Lamy and the final successful blowing of the huge iron safe aroused keen interest in this part of the state a few months ago. Pretty wild. I mean, there's safe blowings and stuff like that. But as we'll find out right now, because I don't want to like make it seem like something it's not. There is a later clipping from a couple weeks later, uh, same newspaper that says Gus Evans is not guilty. Jury finds. W.A. Evans, better known as Gus Evans, was found not guilty of robbing or getting others to rob the post office in Tom Hanna's store at Lamy. The jury retired shortly after noon today and after dining began deliberations. It is said the jurors quickly arrived at their verdict. The robbery of the post office at Lamy occurred during the night of September 14th or 15th last year. A master safecracker performed the job, blowing the safe so quietly that the explosion by nitroglycerin did not disturb the neighborhood. Pretty cool. Obviously, this means that they were not guilty. Uh, Their name was in the newspaper for something pretty wild, so I wanted to mention it. But um, obviously, this was something different with like a master safecracker, which uh, what was in that safe that made this person want to use nitroglycerin? to blow it up. Chick is still kind of a bad boy for being included in the newspaper for uh, robbing this place, but uh, he didn't do it. The next one, though, is also from the Santa Fe New Mexican uh, in January 1929. says Chick Evans goes on trial. Roswell, New Mexico, January 18th, M.L. Chick Evans of Santa Fe went to trial in federal court today on a charge of possession and sale of intoxicating liquor. Evans was charged to have made a number of sales as proprietor of the Borough Alley Cafe. So this was during Prohibition, which went from 1919 to 1933. I'm not sure if it was taken less serious in the later years of Prohibition. Uh, It probably wasn't. I mean, it was the 18th Amendment. um, So it very likely was still very serious. Andy Dwyer from ADC Drums, who sent this to me, um, mentioned that this would probably be um, during the time of the Anti-Saloon League, who were the people uh, that really, I guess, enforced this prohibition um, law in Santa Fe and were the ones who were probably involved with uh, busting up Chick's um, bar and his operation. Then the last bit of information I have on this that also kind of ties this one up a little bit, a little less um, final than the previous one, but it says Chick Evans and Billy Mente not guilty is plea. Federal court at Roswell is, I think it says, still busy with prohibition law violators going all the way down to the bottom because a lot of this other stuff is just other people. It says ML Chick Evans of Santa Fe pleaded not guilty to a prohibition charge and William Mente of Santa Fe also charged with prohibition kind of gets cut off, says they're pleading not guilty. The trial will be held later in the week. He very well was probably not guilty of that as well, but it's just interesting that Chick Evans of, you know, the original Evans drumheads uh, was involved in some kind of, you know, risky operations that made it into the newspaper at that time. He was a young guy. A lot of the stuff he did with the drumheads was in the 50s. He was born in 1907. So again, he would have been older at that point. He was still pretty much a kid at this point. That's about it for the Chick Evans articles for today. Um, really cool to see this. Obviously, he was a much younger guy. Uh, the the Mylar kind of battle between Remo happened later in like the 50s. So this was a while before that, like 20 plus years Pretty interesting. He kind of had that bad boy persona and and played into it with his uh, band at that time. So thanks to Andy Dwyer for sending me this stuff. Like I said, I plan to do a full Chick Evans episode. I think that would be awesome. Or just Evans drumheads in general, because I think Chick Evans would be kind of a, a sliver of it. And then it became a whole different company. Um, so very cool. Um, thanks for watching this episode. Be sure to subscribe and check back. And um, you can find me on Patreon. I'll put links for that in the bottom um, if you want to help support the show and get involved. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. 